Hi, this is Jim Merritt with Quick Trainer. I recently received an email um, asking me how to properly handle the receipt of deposits, the payment of sales tax um, for a, um, a client of this person writing. She's a bookkeeper. Um, she wanted to know how to properly handle deposits, sales tax, uh, and just, just the general process of, of receiving deposits and then reversing those deposits and recognizing the revenue. So that's what this QuickBooks Tip and Trick is all about. To start with, I've set up a, um, an item that is called Customer Deposit that's used for receiving the deposits. On the cost side and on the income side, it points to an other current liability account called Client Deposit. It is a non-taxable item. And then when it comes time to invoice for services and products, I've got two items set up just for illustration purposes. Yours would probably look totally different. I just wanted to create something quick and simple. The first one is a decorating item. It's a service type item. On the, on the cost side, it points to cost of goods subcontractors. Um, obviously, if you had people doing consulting services um, that were employees, it would point to an employee's um, cost of goods. On the income side, it simply points to an income account called decorating revenue and is a non-taxable item because it is a service. The other item is a non-inventory type item implying that um, you don't stock these parts, but you buy them for jobs as needed. And uh, it's called decorating product. Again, yours would probably be totally different and more specific. On the cost side, it uh, refers to decorating product purchase and flows to a cost of goods account called cost of goods product and materials. On the income side, it is a taxable item and it flows to the same income item as our previous item that we discussed called decorating revenue. All right, so let's get started. Step one. You get a job, you sign a contract, the customer gives you, let's say, $5,000 as a deposit. So we'll create an invoice for our client, and we'll call it Store 1. We'll say that this happened on 8-1, and we're going to add our customer deposit to this, and let's just say that it was $5,000. And we're finished with this part, and we want to now receive the revenue. Check one, two, three, four. Um, I like to do this. It's subjective, but um, I think it helps when you're looking at deposits uh, to easily see um, what what payment or what invoice uh, this deposit is for. Of course, there are other ways to get to that same piece of information. And I'll date this for um, eight two and save and close now. What has happened? If I look at a balance sheet, there is that $5,000 client deposit. Again, it's a liability. Um, and then on the income side, and I've done this for illustration purposes, you can see there are absolutely no income, no cost of goods, no expenses. We haven't recognized any of that yet. And we'll pretend like this is a brand new business. So then the day comes when it's time to actually invoice the client um, for our services, for our product, and we want to reverse the deposit and recognize the full job as revenue. So very simple to do because of the, uh, the legwork I laid for setting up my items. And we'll say that this is 814, and I'm going to list my decorating service item on here, and we'll say that that was $4,000. And we also had our decorating product, and we'll say that um, uh, we'll say we had six thousand dollars in materials for the employees. Plus, because this is a taxable item, the product, so we're pretending like we're purchasing this product tax exempt, and then we're charging the client sales tax. We have an additional four hundred eighty dollars here. So once I save this. If I now go to the um, balance sheet, you can see that the client deposit has disappeared because we have reversed it. 
And on the on the uh, profit and loss statement, we have our ten thousand dollars for this job that we just created. And of course, back on the balance sheet, we have sales tax payable. Okay, you know what? I made a mistake. We forgot one critical step. This client does not owe us $10,480. We need to reverse the deposit. So I'm going to put on here customer deposit. And I'm going to put a minus $5,000 on here. And that's what's going to actually reverse the, um, the client, the customer deposit that was on here earlier. And again, we see the full revenue here. All right. I hope that helps you and hope, I hope it makes it clear. Have any questions, feel free to email us at info at quicktrainer.biz and visit our website at www.quicktrainer.biz. Make it a great day.